In today's video, I will be sharing with you guys three beautiful Dollar Tree farmhouse DIYs. In my first DIY, I will be turning a Dollar Tree basket into this beautiful planter. I am going to dry paint the basket using the Apple Barrel acrylic paint in white and this paintbrush. I'm going to do that all over the basket. I'm not doing the inside since I am adding greenery. You won't be able to see the inside. In some parts, I added way too much white, so to remove some of the white, I'm going to sand it using this sand sheet I got from Dollar Tree. So the basket isn't so plain, I'm going to add some shoestring. To decorate the inside of the basket, I'm using some lamb ears I got from Walmart. These were $2. Dollar Tree does carry so many beautiful floral you can use instead. I was going to leave it like that, but then I decided to add some lavender to it. And I got these from Walmart. And this is how this beautiful planter turned out, but I decided I wanted it to be hanging from the wall. So to do that, I will be using some zip ties I got from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use a dowel that I used in one of my previous DIYs. I am adding two zip ties to the back of the basket, one on each side. And I am not painting these. These are kind of like a clear or like a whitish color. And you can't really see them, so I chose not to paint them. Also, this basket already has holes, so you can just put in the zip ties through them. This dowel is from Lowe's, and the little hooks are from Dollar Tree. I painted them dark brown, and I went over the dowel with an antique wax. And that is it for this planter. You can use it two different ways. My second DIY is this farmhouse sign. For this DIY, I will be reusing this sign I used in one of my previous DIYs. As you can see, when I removed the home and the planters, it did remove some of the paint. So I'm going to cover that up with some more paint using the Apple Barrel acrylic paint in white. I did not remove the paint sticks because they are covering the zigzag pattern that this sign has. And I also went over them with white acrylic paint. But later on, I ended up changing them again. I am going to transfer the word farmhouse to my sign. And I used the Pick Collage app to print this out. I did have to print it out like this because I wanted the letters to be big. Other options you can use for this step are the poster sticker Dollar Tree carries, even the wood letters. Before I start transferring the word, I'm going to draw a line so like that my word can be straight. To transfer the word, I'm going to scribble the back. I'm going to place it on the line so like that it can be nice and straight and then I'm going to trace it. I went over it with a pencil so I can see it better. I'm going to paint them using the Apple Barrel acrylic paint in jet black. Once it was dry, I went and erased the line I drew at the beginning. 
To decorate the sign, I will be using these leaves. These are leftover leaves from a Dollar Tree wall decal sticker. I used in one of my previous DIYs. These other ones are also from a previous DIY. Here is where I'm changing the color of the sticks and I'm using this silver acrylic paint I got from Dollar General. I'm going to try to make them look galvanized so then once that is dry I'm, I'm going to go over it with my Waverly chalk paint and elephant and then with a color steel. Then I'm going to add some antique wax around the edges. And that is it for this large farmhouse wall decor. I think it turned out beautiful. My third DIY is my favorite. This is a very large wall decor. I did. It's a half windmill. From Dollar Tree, I will be using two of these wall decors. And this Happy Halloween that I used in my Hocus Pocus DIY. They have these little middle pieces. Two Dollar Tree Jumbo Score Stick and this wire hanger I got from Walmart. I started to work on the blades first, so I removed the staples and the strings that these signs have. I am going to cut these because I want them to look more like a windmill blade. You can use them just like that or even just cut the bottom point off. And use them like that I just wanted them to look more like the windmill blades so I am cutting them and to do that I'm going to mark them with a ruler and a pencil next I'm going to cut them using this box cutter you can also use your scissors if you have some good ones mine are fabric scissors so they did struggle a little to cut the wood I mean it's not even wood the cardboard And this is how they look. I did end up cutting them a little bit more later on. Now I'm going to work in the middle piece of the windmill. I will be using this leftover Halloween piece I used back in my Hocus Pocus DIY back in October. I'm going to just cut it and make a little half of a circle. And to do that, I'm going to use this bucket and then trace it and cut it. And this is how they look all nice and cut. You can send them now or after you spray paint them. I did it after. Next, I'm going to work on the wire. I did take it apart and mold it into a circle. Now that everything's ready, I'm going to spray paint it using this metallic silver. Once they were spray painted and dry, I kept looking at them and they still didn't look like the blade. So this is where I decided I wanted to cut them more and I did trim a little bit more off and they look better. Before I glue everything, I'm going to cut the two jumbo squares I got from Dollar Tree and make them into six pieces. I forgot to spray paint one of the jumbo score sticks. I left it like that. I will paint them later. For now, I'm going to flip everything to the back so I can start gluing the sticks. For my windmill to be nice and straight and round, I'm going to use this lid to help me out. I will be using these paint sticks to use them as spacers. Now that everything's nice and straight, I'm going to remove the lid and start gluing the sticks. When I'm finished gluing all of them, I'm going to remove the paint sticks. Now I'm going to glue the hanger. 
I did have to trim it a little bit because it was too big. And before I hang it though, I want to mark each blade to down to four inches. So like that, I know I'm gonna glue it there and it's nice and straight. I did have trouble trying to mold the hanger into like it being straight, but it doesn't look bad. Then I'm going to glue it and some of the stuff, like I said, I had trouble. So I had to add some weight on top so it can be kept down and it can be glued. I left the weights there for about an hour. Then I removed them and I wanted it to be more secure. So I decided to add some pieces of this um, canvas. I even added a big piece to the middle part. Now that it's all nice and glued and put together, I'm going to start making it look galvanized. And to do that, I will start with a Waverly chalk paint and elephant using this paintbrush. I'm going to do that to all the blades to the middle part and the sticks and even the wire that goes around. Once that is dry, I'm going to go over it with the same paintbrush but different paint. I will be using the Waverly chalk paint and steel. Once that is dry, I'm going to change my paintbrush and then go over it again with the Waverly Chalk Paint and Elephant. So I was inspired by a windmill I seen from Amazon and that had like rustic around all the blades. So I decided to try to do that and to do that I will be using the antique wax and this small paintbrush. I added some of the antique wax to the sticks and the wire and to the center of the middle piece of the windmill I did make like half a circle I'm going to add some silver thumbtacks from Dollar Tree and I'm going to add one to each blade using this hammer after that I'm going to paint them with the antique wax And that is it guys. I hope you guys like this. This is a pretty big home decor piece. And that is it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And see you next time. Bye.